If there's one Nigerian artiste you think you know everything about, it's DeVito. But did you know that he was once a backup singer to Cena Rambo? Probably not. It's a very long story. Very, very long story, but I could try as much as possible to cut them down. That's why in this video, I'll be telling you 10 things you didn't know about DeVito. So it's enough. <laughs> Number one, DeVito dropped out of university. You'd expect DeVito to have at least completed college considering how super rich his family is, but as it turns out, he dropped out of Oakwood University within three semesters after a series of poor grades. It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. What it is. <laughs> DeVito studied business management, but it seems like he just wasn't cut out for studying. Although this was partly because of his focus on starting a music career, it's not unimaginable to think that the ladies also had an impact on him. I mean, can anyone even count the number of scandals he's been involved in? Anyway, his father was not happy with him dropping out especially after he failed to inform his family for several months. Upon returning to Lagos in 2011, his father had him detained at the airport. I was like the hot new kid, all the girls brought out. They was running to me, let's go, let's go. There's army inside the show. Bro, my dad brought like 50 army, 20 policemen. They arrested my manager, my friends, my girlfriend at the time, locked everybody up. What? That's some strict parenting there. Speaking of his parents, I'm sure you at least know how influential DeVito's family is. But did you know the influence extends just beyond his father? That brings me to number two. DeVito's grandfather was a politician. We all know just how influential the Adeleke family is, and it all started with DeVito's grandfather, Chief Raji Ayula Adeleke, who represented District 11 in the Osun State Senate. His political influence stretched across the state and even to other parts of southwest Nigeria. At least we now know that DeVito's father didn't just get his power and influence out of the blue. But despite his family's influence, DeVito decided not to become a politician. Instead, he chose music, which obviously worked out for him in the end. Just imagine DeVito as your senator, or probably even the governor of Osun State. Maybe he might be less interested in bed gymnastics with his various baby mamas. <laughs> You get it? If you don't get it, forget about it. Number three, DeVito has several baby mamas and it only seems to get longer when we think it's long enough already. He has two daughters from two women and one son from a UK-based woman. Just when we thought we'd heard enough about his baby mamas, DeVito's manhood struck again. This time, a US-based model named Anita Brown announced that she was expecting a child with DeVito. At this point, it's obvious that DeVito is as efficient in the bed as he is in the studio. And now to number four. DeVito was born in the United States. Contrary to what many people think, DeVito, although a Nigerian, wasn't actually born in Nigeria. He was born in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. When he was young, DeVito's family moved back to Nigeria, where the future star was raised. He finished his high school education at the British International School in Lagos and moved back to the U.S. for his tertiary education. Although DeVito was born in Atlanta and actually spent some of his holidays there, he is still considered a Nigerian by many, and I think it's clear why. Even if you were to mistake him for an American after hearing him speak once, you're sure to realize he's a Nigerian. Who they breeds? Who they breeds? Yes. Baba, he took. Yes. He took. He took. Yeah. His music is one of the reasons Afrobeats is on the map today. But what if I told you that DeVito actually started his career trying to be a hip hop star? Well, that's what I'm going to tell you at number five. For all his contributions to the global popularity of Afrobeats, DeVito actually started off making American music. If you look at his upbringing, it's easy to understand why he would start with that, considering he spent most of his childhood listening to artists like 50 Cent and T.I. In fact, Davido explained in a 2019 interview that he didn't really involve himself in African music until he went home after two years of being in America. So how'd you get into to, to Afrobeats and, and, and making um, Afrobeats type of music? I mean, when I was in, when I was in college, um, that's when like the Nigerian, the African industry was getting big. Right. And um, my cousins would send me the new music like, yo, this person, at, back then it was called, it was Two-Face, The Bonds, P-Square, those was like 
the three hottest back then. So I went back one Christmas. I had a break from school. It's like one year in Alabama. Mm -hmm. I went back one Christmas. I get to Nigeria and it's lit. It's like everything's lit. The artist is making bread. Mm -hmm. Like when I went back home, it was just like Nigerian music. Everybody was just crazy about Nigeria. And then that's when I fell in love with it. At some point in his career, the music gods must have whispered something into his ear that made him fancy African music and even decide to model his music after it. Number six, he was surprised by the success of Fall. They say it's never easy to predict which songs will become hits. Well, this was certainly true in this case. DeVito released Fall in 2017, and since then the song has done brilliantly well. According to DeVito, he didn't pay much attention to the song when it was released. He just thought it to be another song he would make some money off, but how wrong was he? They play. Yeah, they play. Yeah, they play. Anyway, Fall became one of the biggest songs that put DeVito on the map internationally, so I guess that explains how wrong he was. But at number seven, he started out as a music producer. As we know, DeVito's passion for music started back when he was a student at Oakwood University. He soon developed a love for music and was all about creating his own beats as a producer. When you devote so much time and effort to music, you're bound to have issues academically. Little wonder he dropped out of university after just three semesters. Well, at least he turned out to be a successful artist so we can say music paid off. But what's even crazier is he did that all by himself. Cause in number eight, his father wasn't initially supportive of his music career. At the start of his music career, DeVito's dad showed no support for his newfound path and for good reason. DeVito had just dropped out of school due to low grades caused by his focus on music rather than school. You will end up in McDonald's. You will end up in McDonald's. That's what I meant. My first big hit in the song, it means, let me do what I want to do. You can't stop me. I'm the son of a rich man. That's why they call me OBO. So he loved it. Everybody started calling him Baba Olo. So he started liking it before. Oh, now he gas. Now yeah, dad is yeah, gas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now he gas. And dad bought, after that, he bought the bag. DeVito was a backup singer for Cena Rambo. Back in the States, when DeVito was just starting out in music, he used to sing as a backup for his two cousins, Cena Rambo and B Red. Cousins? I bet you didn't know that before. The trio were part of a musical group called KB International, and the three of them basically started their music careers together. But just like DeVito, it seems like the women-related scandals run in the Adeleke family. Recently, Sina Rambo was accused by his ex-wife of physical abuse while the pair were together. Well, at least DeVito limits his scandals to matters of his manhood. So there you have it. Which of these things do you find most intriguing? Be sure to let us know in the comment section below.